Okay, looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another Abuzwazin session. Uh, so let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream as usual. So let's wait a little bit for the web applications, for the modern web application to refresh the window. Uh, live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch at television? So let's find out. Let me copy paste the topic. Today, yet again, we're doing 3D and C completely on CPU. Can you imagine that in 2022? That's unimaginable. Uh, I'm going to give the link to uh, the channel where I do all that. I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. There we go. The stream has been officially started. So today we continue uh, developing Olivet, which is uh, a graphics library that we started to develop some time ago. You can find it in here. I'm going to put it in the chat. And for people who are watching on uh, YouTube, sometime in the future maybe in 2024 uh by that time i'll probably upload that thing there so you can find this thing in the uh in the description right hello hello welcome 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 so on the previous stream we were doing some 3d graphics can you believe that so in the previous stream we did something cool so we took the utah teapot model obg file model and we actually loaded it into into memory and rendered it using olivets that's right. So that's what we did. Let me demonstrate you. It was actually super cool. Uh, but since it's a, you know, software renderer, it's extremely slow. So we can't render that in real time. And uh, on top of that, we are using a high polygon uh, version of the Utah teapot. So we can't really render so many polygons like on, on the CPU completely. Uh, right. So let me actually rebuild everything just in case. We have a lot of stuff in here, right? So then we have tests, we have the asset compiler, we have all of the demos. Each demo has three versions, SDL, uh, Terminal and Wasm. And plus we need to build the demo uh, for viewing OBG, which I not integrated into the, the main uh, demo folder. So yeah, there we go. So if I try to run view obg, it will take this obg file and turn it into PNG, right? So obg file has like uh, let's take a look. It has almost 10,000 of the lines and effectively it has um, 3,644 vertices and 6,320 uh, faces, right? So, and then it uh, goes ahead and just renders that into this image, right? So as you can see, it took the model and actually rendered it. So we actually use um, rainbowish triangles to actually see where are the polygons right so it becomes quite visible uh so that's kind of cool so the next thing i want to do with this uh sort of like demo i want to uh animate it right i want to rotate the uh utah teapot in real time we're probably not going to use this version of the utah teapot we're probably going to use a low polygon model right and people lovely people on discord actually came up with a lot of cool things uh, that we can probably use in the in the demo so let me actually show you i think colin uh made a low polygon version of a of a tcap that i drew some time ago <laughs> Right, there we go. So, some time ago I drew just like a very scuffed um, cup, right? So, I think we turned it into a mod for some reason, right? Uh, it's sodium, I think it's sodium T. No, ah, okay, I don't remember. So, yeah, I think I think it got removed because it was part of BTTV or something and I can't pay for BTTV. But yeah, so that was um, the emote and Columbetka actually turned it into into higher polygon model and then into lower polygon model. We can try to uh, load this thing uh, in the future and actually animate it since it's going to have less polygons. I think it's going to be feasible. We can actually try to do that right, time, uh, right now. Why not? So here's the uh, lower polygon version, right? So let's actually download it. Um, how was this made? As far as I know, Columbetka uses Blender to make those. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was ma uh, made in Blender, and a high polygon version actually, you know, has a blend, uh, blend thingy, but I'm not sure if that's what you're, what you're asking about. Anyway, so let's actually try to uh, bring that thing in there. So I'm gonna copy paste, download. Uh, what was that? Sodium, yeah, sodium cup, and I'm gonna put it in here. 
uh, there you go, so Tsudin Cup low poly, uh, we have only 343 lines in here, so this is actually very low poly version of the, of the model, so we should be able to actually load it up. Unfortunately, the problem with the current demo is that the file name is hard-coded, so I think I'm gonna quickly just unhardcode this entire stuff, I'm gonna accept the, the arguments, command line arguments. And first of all, I'm going to check that we even have enough command line arguments, right? So if the command line arguments is less than two, the first one is the name of the program. We're going to say something like uh, error, um, no input file is provided, no input file is provided. And then we're gonna just simply exit with no zero exit code. If this thing was provided, we're gonna just do arg v1, right, there you go. So let me re quickly recompile everything. So maybe I'm gonna also go ahead and just comment out all of the things that we don't care about. I don't care about the assets, tests, and uh, demos. I only care about the view object thingy that we're currently working on. So that will reduce the compilation times. Mm -mm. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, all right, so. Uh, let me try to run this entire thing. So there is no input, and if I provide the teapot obg, right? So it uh, actually renders this entire thing. And if I provide the sodium cup low poly, we can actually time it because like it has less amount of faces, so it should actually uh, render very fast. And it rendered. It, it didn't really. Actually, it rendered slower. <laughs> I think. Uh, wait a second, sodium. Uh, teapot. Uh, what's that? Th that's actually weird. Is that because maybe I forgot to recompile something? Well, yeah. Anyway, so let's do uh, low poly. And uh, there you go. So this is a low polygon version of the cup. We can't see the handle, uh, right? Because it's probably behind the the cup itself. Uh, but as we implement the rotation, maybe it will become visible. But yeah, that's how the cup looks like, <laughs> right? Uh, so that's pretty funny, um, right. And before we go and uh, actually implement, um, you know, the animated version of this entire stuff, I would like to address a very interesting bug that I found while cleaning up the source code. Uh, right, so let's actually render the um, um, the high polygon to the teapot, right, so let's do obg, uh, there we go. Mm, it's quite surprising that it's just like no difference in, in rendering. So I wonder, I wonder what exactly is going on there. Uh, but yeah, so uh, let's actually open up this entire thing. And uh, there are some really weird bugs on the edges, especially when you're rendering very thin uh, triangles, right? So you can't see these sort of bugs, uh, but if you zoom in, uh, there's something in here, but I suppose this is Z fighting, right? Because it's it's pretty much the same color, so everything's fine. So there's something weird with colors actually spiking in here, right? So these colors are kind of like unusual. Why do we, um, why do we have the colors spiking, like especially in here? Um, right. So there should be no of such stuff in my opinion, on this edge. So, because we have, like, uh, green and red in here, and here we have all, all of the, like, random noise, for whatever reason, even though there sh shouldn't be, in my opinion. It's almost like something overflows or whatnot. And what's interesting is that while cleaning up the tests, I actually found a way to reproduce that in a more controlled environment. So, uh, I have a file, a test file, uh, which is called weird triangle bug expe uh, expected basically expected as a prefix uh, is a suffix for for files um for the test file so we, i have a testing tool that actually looks up uh files with that specific suffix so if you open it up you can probably see that bug uh you might not actually probably see it right away but if we zoom in you can actually start seeing that do you see that this is like a really weird. Right. So here we're supposed to have red colors, right? We're supposed to have red colors, but we have actually yellow. Right. What is going on? This is really weird. So, and if we think about the, um, like what is the hex color? 
of, of red. It's FF0000, right? So this is the color that we expect. But what we get in reality is yellow, and yellow is a combination of red and green. So all of a sudden, we have this spike. We have this weird spike uh that sort of overflows to the next channel or something like that so and similarly we have something with the cyan on the other side maybe maybe not no it's it's actually all yellow sometimes we even have a red in here like why do we have red in here specifically so it is really really weird and um we can take a look into how we actually mix the colors so we use a function mix colors 3 uh, which accepts the various center coordinates, right? It accepts the various center coordinates and three colors, and it uh, mixes them according to the various center coordinates. So one of the things we can probably have in here is uh, overflow on one of these things. But here's the thing: this macro actually ensures it actually ensures that it doesn't overflow because it all only takes the lower byte. But it's not true, because if it overflows a little bit, it just takes the whatever is left on the lower byte, right? So it will cut off a lot of information in there. So um, let me let me see. So we can try to do the following thing. I wonder if it will work, actually. Okay. So if uh, this thing, then uh, something equal 255 right probably we can we can just do it like that so the reason why i did it like this so i can just right and then if this entire thing is greater or equal to 255 right we're gonna just like clamp it to 255 okay so let me go ahead and rebuild this entire thing so we're uh i don't care about this thing i'm gonna be building only tests let's take a look at the tests Mm -mm. All right, so and then uh, I'm gonna do build tests and I'm gonna update. Uh, so let me take a look at the list of the things. Okay, so here is the test that I'm doing right now. And if I update this test, it will regenerate this file and we can take a look if it actually changed anything, right? It actually didn't. Uh, it actually didn't change anything. So my hypothesis is that uh, some of these points, some of these pixel points actually are outside of the triangle. As, as weird as it sounds, they might be outside of the triangle. I can explain why. Right, because we're not dealing with a continuous, continuous space. We're dealing with pixels. Uh, maybe I can even try to draw that, I suppose. Um, so all of the math is sort of designed to be on a continuous space. But pixels are not continuous. The green pixel at the left top uh, corner disappeared. Okay, so that means that one was caused by the by the overflow, but that doesn't mean that it's a, it's a major problem. So the major problem is actually a bit deeper. Uh, the major problem is a bit deeper. So let's actually draw a grid. I wish you could draw grids faster in my paint. Right, because sometimes I just like need quickly a grid to explain something about the pixels, but I can't easily do that. Uh, let's imagine, let's imagine that we have uh, this triangle. So the actual triangle, uh, right, so we imagine that those points are at the centers. The actual mathematical triangle will probably looks like, look like this, right? Uh, and because of that, you would color uh, let's actually pick some some different color. You would color all of these pixels, right? So you color these pixels, you color this pixel, you color this pixel, uh, and so on and so forth. But here is an interesting thing. Um, is this pixel a part of the triangle? Is it a part of the triangle? 
Well, you can say the this particular edge actually touches this pixel, so the answer is yes. But the coordinates of the of this specific pixel is the center of this thing, and the center of that pixel is not part of the triangle. So that specific coordinate actually here is going to be outside of the triangle, while it should be inside. Right, and because of that, if we take the very center coordinates of this specific point, of this specific center of the pixel, they're going to be outside of the triangle. And what is happening with the very center coordinates that are outside of the triangle? The answer is, I have no idea. <laughs> right. Because uh, we derived the very center coordinates from a specific formula, and within the triangle, everything is well defined. But when it goes outside, something goes haywire maybe they become negative or something like that and if they become negative it kind of explains um it kind of explains why some of the things overflow right because we're working with like uh, unsigned integers and all of a sudden we, we get something negative and all of that negative it actually overflows and stuff like that all right so uh let me uh, let's actually try investigate that specific thing, right? Let's try to investigate that specific thing. Uh, which also brings us to a very interesting conclusion, right? So the very standard coordinates are the coordinates u1, u2, u3, right? And they're defined uh, as the ones that have the following properties. u1 plus u2 plus u3 has to be equal to 1, right? And then you have three points, right? Uh, you have three points. The first one is... Uh, x1, y1, uh, then x2, y2, and then x3, y3. And uh, you have a point inside of the triangle, xp, yp. So another property of the Beristani coordinates is that uh, u1 multiplied by x1 plus boom, boom. So this one is going to be u2, x2, y2, uh, y2, xp, and the same goes uh, x, uh, replace it with y, right? So, and this is the system of equation, equations, right? So, but for Beresteiner coordinates, they are defined through this system of equations. So, essentially, uh, if we have a point that does not satisfy this kind of stuff, we can simply safely say that this point is probably outside of the triangle, which brings us to a very interesting thing. Can we use very standard coordinates to actually render the triangle instead of scanning the line? So, again, how do we render the triangles right now? We are rendering the triangles by using the scan line. We're scanning the line. Right. So, uh, let me show you. It's, it's actually a very interesting rabbit hole. Uh, right, so imagine that you have three points, right? And the way we render all of that, the way we render all of that, so this is the third one. We effectively split this entire triangle into two. We always split it into two. Right, and the reasons why we split it into two is because we have two pairs of slopes. So this is the first pair of slopes, and this is the second pair of slopes. Uh, so, and essentially what we do, we do, we have two loops. The first loop actually draws the lines for the upper triangle for the first pair of uh, slopes until it fills in this entire thing. And then we have another triangle and another pair of slopes and we do another loop uh, for, for these two things. Right, and that, and that way we are filling in the entire triangle. Right. But if we have a way to tell whether a specific point is inside of the triangle or outside of the triangle, we can try to approach rendering in a different way. We can actually find the bounding box of the triangle. Right. We can find the bounding box of the triangle. Uh, and uh, basically iterate through each point uh, of this tri uh, of the no, triangle by rectangle. Iterate each point of this rectangle and basically ask, is this thing inside of the triangle or outside of the triangle? And if it's inside, uh, we're going to render this thing. And if it's outside, we're not going to render this thing. So, which is actually, um, in my opinion, more simple 
Right, because whatever we do right now with uh, like separating into two things is kind of complicated, right? So you have to calculate the slopes and stuff like that. But if you could just like use a single formula to check whether the point inside or outside, it's going to be much simpler. And furthermore, it will automatically fix the problem with overflowing because whatever points you're drawing, you always have the correct coordinates, right? You always have the correct coordinates. Furthermore, it makes it easier to do anti-aliasing because you can just take not only the points, but also sub points. You know what I mean? So I didn't, we had a stream where I implemented anti-aliasing, right? And with the anti-aliasing, I didn't, um, I didn't want to go into the triangles, right? Because I didn't know how to exactly properly implement that for the triangles uh, with the scan line. But if we can pull off this kind of approach, it will become natural. Right, so you just plug in these sub-pixels into this uh, process and it will give you anti-aliasing basically for free. Uh, furthermore, you could probably even make it super easy to parallelize. For instance, uh, you can say, okay, I don't want to render the entire triangle, I want to render uh, a certain chunks of the triangle, right, something like this. Right, and you iterate only pixels of this chunk. And all of this scatting out of the triangle will happen automatically. Um, well, you can kind of do the same thing with the scan line, but with this sort of approach, it will become easier. So there's a lot of benefits into doing it like this. Uh, right, so, and this is basically what I would like to explore right now and see if it's usable for our library. Right, because it's easily parallelizable. It's like simpler to implement and understand and uh, yeah so that's a good idea so let's actually go ahead and see if we can do something like that so to check how can we even do that i want to make a simple um test thingy uh, a simple test setup or workbench so to speak uh right so this is going to be full um so let me check if anyone actually subscribed recently uh okay so there's no subscriptions Okay, so let's continue. Uh, so let's define a simple can as uh, um, simple singles, uh, small canvas, right? So let's define something like uh, 10 by 10 canvas, right? So this is going to be 10 height. And uh, let's go ahead and iterate through this entire thing, pixel by pixel. Uh, so this is going to be height plus i. Uh, and uh, this is going to be X. So basically, I would just want to see if this will work at all. Uh, I want to try to render this thing with um, ASCII graphics, right? Just just to test things out, right? Just to test things out. And if it works out, we may try to uh, port this entire idea to, to the library itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, let me see how it's going to look like. Uh, so this is going to be a CD out. Uh, and this one is going to be the new line. Uh, okay. So uh, I call it full for some reason. Maybe I should call it try. Uh, like berry, berry try. Yeah, so that's what it's going to be called. Uh, now I'm going to do link berry try berry try dot c so i don't think we need anything else right so uh might as well actually simultaneously run it berry try okay there we go so okay uh it's not particularly square because of the font so let me go ahead and maybe increase this entire thing so maybe i'm gonna say that the width is going to be actually twice of the height. Uh, maybe this is going to be some sort of factor, right? So let's say that we're going to have a factor 10 and I'm going to replace all of that stuff with a factor. Uh, Luke, D Luke DDC, thank you so much for tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your first subscription, by the way. All right, so we have something like this, cool. Uh, let's allocate an array of pixels, right? So we're going to have pixels. This is width and this is height. So I'd like to actually fill those pixels with something, right? So because the way I'm going to render all of that, I'm going to just like literally dump them. 
Uh, right, so let's have display and move this entire thing into the display. Right, and we can just let it take the pixels. So we take the specific row. Brooklyn Dev, thank you so much for Twitch Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So plus X, and this one is going to be just a new line. And there we go. There we go. So I'm going to just run this entire thing. And as you can see, it's basically returned uh, zeros. All right, so I want to actually initialize this entire thing with something like clear it. Uh, maybe I'm going to use clean because I'm not sure if clear is already taken by POSIX or something like that. Uh, and, all right, so let's go ahead and just iterate this entire stuff one more time. Um, I'm going to actually use something like dots. Right, so it's it's visible. Yeah, there we go. So here are the dots. Okay, so now what I want to do, uh, I want to just pick three points, right? So I want to have uh, x1, y1, then uh, x2, y2, and the same thing for the third point. There we go. So what's going to be the x1? Um, so the way we're going to do that, let's actually uh, put some markers on the canvas. Uh, let's put some markers on the canvas so we can see those specific points. Uh, right. So this is going to be y1 multiplied by width plus x1 and let's just use maybe a hash, right? So the same goes here, boom. And the same thing goes here. There we go. So let's take a look at this stuff. And it's sec faulted, uh, which is rather interesting because... Um, wait, what? Oh, because they are like not initialized properly. Uh, so we, we have to pick the, the exact values. So what's going to be the value? So the first thing is probably going to be... Uh, let me say that it's going to be width, but third of the width. But in terms of y, it's going to be zero, right? So this is going to be our first point. So I'm not sure if, if it's visible for you, right? I'm not sure if it's visible for you. So let me actually put this stuff in here. Um, okay. Mm -mm. So just checking my sub uh, feed. Okay, so nobody else is subscribed. Cool. Um, so let me see. There we go. So this is going to be the first point. So we're going to put it somewhere here. So another one I'm probably going to put somewhere here, right? So similarly, uh, the second one is going to be um, something like zero, right? And this one is going to be third of the height, right? So this is going to be third of the height. And let me uh, let me see. So this one, mm, yeah, it's the third one. So let's actually do the second one. There we go. So this is the second point. And the third one, let's say that is going to be somewhere here in the corner, right? So it's, it's actually like a classical triangle. Not really classical, but it's clearly a triangle. So this is going to be one, a width, but it's going to be minus one. And this is going to be height. And it's going to be minus one. Uh, and of course, I will now come this into I think. And there we go. So uh, we have a triangle. So now let's try to do something interesting. Let's try to iterate each and individual pixel and take the very center coordinates of those pixels, right? So um, let's see, y0, y less than height. Mm -hmm. So then x, uh, width plus plus x. And we probably need a function that takes the bare center coordinates. So let me take it very centric. So cool. I'm going to just copy paste it in here. Uh, and let's take the signature, right? Because it's easier to just plug in the values from having the signature copy, so to speak. So here is the triangle itself, right? So these are the coordinates of the triangle. Then we take the actual current point and we put it in here. And these are the output, the very centric coordinates, right? So we're going to have u1, u2, and the determinant, right? So and in here, we're going to just pass these things by a point as they are the output, right? So effectively, uh, as the comment here says, we imply that u3 is equal to determinant minus u1 and u2, right? So this is basically what we imply. And we can take a look at the resulting values, right? Um, so it's going to be u1, u2, u3, determinant. 
And maybe it makes sense to actually do something like U1, uh, right, U2, U3, and the determinant. There we go. Maybe even put some, some commas in there, I don't know, to, for this thing to look nice. So here we're gonna have like uh, a couple of hundreds of these values, like literally 200, I think. So if I dump all of that onto the, uh, onto the log, onto the screen, I think it's not gonna be that much. Uh, right? Okay, what do we have? Okay, so interestingly enough, the determinant here is negative sometimes, but so is uh, some of these values. Right, so is some of these values. So it doesn't really tell us much, right? Because you can say, okay, something is neg. Well, here clearly uh, something is going to be like overflowing the determinant, right? So that's for sure. Uh, so some of the minuses like cancel out so maybe we should actually turn them into the um, into the floating point form because uh, what we have in here by send the coordinates function actually returns things in integers right it returns things in integers and because of that it doesn't really return you the actual value it returns you uh, the no, uh, numerator and then denominator denominator numerator and denominator and you have to divide them yourself right so when it's done so you can choose whether you want to work with floating points or not uh, right so let's go ahead and just turn all of that into floating points right so it's gonna be something like this <clears throat> all right so we can do something like float divided by the determinant and then float divided by the determinant and then float divided by the determinant and let's actually yeah, Emacs. All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, all right. Okay, so as you can see, some of them are actually negative. Some of them are actually negative. Okay, so let's do an interesting trick. Right. So uh, let's do the following stuff. If one of them, if any of them is negative, we're not going to do anything. If all of them are positive, right, uh, we're going to put something into the... Uh, into the canvas, right? And we'll see which points result like um, in forming some sort of a shape, right? So um, let me copy paste this entire thing and say if this thing is greater than zero and uh, this thing is greater than zero and this thing is greater than zero, right? We are going to uh, take the pixels y multiplied by width plus x and we're going to use the same sort of hash thing otherwise we're just not going to do anything like a really simple thing uh okay so it didn't like that because i'm a dummy Ooh, um am i am i a dummy? yes okay so we, we, we got the triangle it's kind of a strange triangle i would even say oh you know why it is so strange? Huh. This is because I put these things in here. If I don't draw the original markers, if I don't draw the original markers, it looks like this. So what's interesting is that the these specific things are not part of the triangle. And maybe for, for the same reason as I described before, because they're actual values. Oh. I think... What if we say equal? Yeah. Because some of them can literally be equal to zero. Yeah, there we go. So now it includes them. So I just needed to make them equal to zero. This is actually super cool. Um, so, yeah. What if I use half of those things? Yeah, so this is a way to render a triangle. Like, every time you like learn how to render a triangle, everyone just suggests you to use the scanline approach. Uh, right, just like use two slopes and separate it in two, but nobody is really talking, like I, I, at least I have never seen uh, people talking about this approach of rendering a triangle through very center coordinates. Why can't you do that? You can do that, and it's actually like makes more sense. Um, right, so we can try to scale maybe this entire thing. Um, yeah, there we go works and it's it's actually very easy to understand in here but and the function itself bearish center coordinates is a rather simple formula relatively i mean it's kind of difficult to wrap your head around this formula and actually derive it from scratch that's one of the main difficulties with this formula but as soon as you know this formula uh, rendering triangle is basically iterating uh, like a square of pixels and just figuring out what's inside of the pixel what's outside of the pixel 
Um, so that's actually this is very useful. And on top of that, you always know for sure that in here, in here, you have the correct very center coordinates that don't overflow because that's literally the condition that you just checked. That's what's cool about this thing. You literally just check that you have a correct very center coordinates. Right, and th that's why you can be sure in here and you can do whatever you want with them without worrying that it's gonna overflow or do some weird shit. Um, that's so cool, isn't it? So, yeah. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> and... So let's go ahead and try to maybe apply this approach. Uh, it's a very cool solution, thank you. Um, interestingly, so one of the problems that I uh, have with this solution is that I think it's a bit of waste of time, right? Because you have to iterate, look how many like, like empty, like false pixels you have to iterate. With the scan line, you're never iterating things that you're probably not gonna have as, the, as a pixel. But uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, again, you can actually split the chunks of this entire thing and render like parts of it. Uh, who said you cannot just like approximate like where the rectangle is going to be and split it up into separ uh, separate rectangles and render this triangle in chunks? Yeah, this is one of the things you can do with this approach. You can render easily uh, like triangle in chunks, just like render it in chunks. Um, and then you can have a thing on top of this uh, algorithm that figures out what's the optimal configuration of chunks to render it uh, and stuff like that. And you can put those chunks in separate threads, for instance. Uh, <clears throat> All right. So that's pretty cool and stuff. <clears throat> and that might help uh, with this weird bug that I discovered, right? So let's actually try to re-implement the function that renders this triangle using that approach. Uh, though, is it even possible to maybe do something like, <clears throat> like without converting this thing to floats? Right, because what we have in here, here we're essentially uh, we are essentially checking whether this thing is positive or not. Actually, not negative, right? Um, which means that this condition is kind of equivalent to something like Olivet's sign int u1. Is it actually Olivet's sign? I don't remember. Um, let me let me find this entire thing. I think. Olivet's sign. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So this is how we do it. Olivet's sign equal to sign of the determinant so essentially if their signs are equal if their signs are equal that means that the result is going to be positive but this doesn't take into account something like equals uh, right so that means we also have to allow uh, this thing to be zero so this or this thing is equal to zero but first i want to actually check if it's going to work uh, right, so let me do something like this. So this is going to be three, and uh, let me put this stuff like so. Okay, and uh, let's put this stuff in here. So, and that should be like even better because you don't do any conversion between the um, uh, between integers and floats. Uh, right, and we don't have Olivet's sign. Maybe one of the things I have to do in here, I just have to include the Olivet's.c, so it's going to make it a little bit easier. Uh, Olivet's... Why do I call it Olivet's.c? It's kind of like duplicating, duplicating the character. Implicit declaration. Uh, it is not implicit, though. It is available in the... Oh, this is because I didn't uh, define Olivet's implementation. There we go. So it seems to be working. So we're back to the problem of not including the um, the, the vertices themselves, right? But we can uh, actually do something like this. Uh, so let me pick this stuff. Right. And do the following thing. Or, and let's go back. Pick this thing. One more time. 
equal to zero. Though we do not necessarily have to like use a sign in here, right? I'm pretty sure we're not, we don't have to do it like that, but yeah. Uh, so because it's already not about the sign, it's just like about the specific value. And as you can see now, it includes that. So we can actually simplify this entire, not really simplify, but maybe um, speed up. Well, I mean, not converting between floats and there is probably going to be uh, faster, but who knows? Uh, I, don't, I know nothing about programming on computers, so I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, so something like this. Um, so that's a relatively good way to, to check for this thing. What do you guys think? <clears throat> Modern hardware actually works more uh, uh, more like this rather than scan line. Oh, by the way, I do remember Provot actually said it to me. Yeah, so he provided like a link to the series of articles by ah, I forgot his name. Yeah, about software rendering. And he said that the actual hardware renderers like batch the rendering into the, these chunks. And I suppose they, yeah, maybe they're using very standard coordinates or something like similar. Yeah, Fabian, th thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So I, I put it like into my bookmarks, but uh, I haven't read it yet. Uh, I can link to it. Yeah, sure. You can you can post the link if you want to uh, for for people who are in the chat. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. Uh, so I'm gonna put that in the description as well. So yeah, there we go. So it's pretty cool. Um, though maybe it makes sense to actually read like the whole series uh, that consists of 13 articles, right? So I'm gonna actually put the link to to this uh, series, right? So starting from scratch. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay, so Uncle Bugsy, thank you so much for tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right, so we're getting closer to actual like by pipeline or something. <laughs> uh, anyway, so let's go to Olivet and let's find the thing uh, that renders the triangle. So and we don't even have to. So if we're gonna switch to this approach. We don't need this weird structure, Olivet's try, which also tries to keep... Here's the cool thing. You don't have to worry about the order of your vertices because you don't give a shit about the order of the vertices. That's so... Yeah, that, that solves so many problems. Like, just this approach is so fucking cool. And I'm so glad that they discovered it incrementally while working on this thing. Oh my, that, that's so cool. Right, because it just like it solves all of the problems that I had with the scan line. So because I don't use a scan line anymore, so all of the problems with that associated with that are gone. Right, I don't need any of that stuff. So let's actually go and uh, I'm gonna literally copy paste this uh, this code. This code. Okay. Uh, so I still need to like check the boundaries and whatnot, but uh, I think I can do that a little bit later. Okay, um, check the boundaries and bound. um, boundaries. I feel like I will still have to do that, right? Because I still need to figure out the square where I'm gonna I'm gonna put all of that. Yeah. Okay, so let's actually introduce something like low x uh, and high x, right? And essentially, I can say if low x is greater than x2, that means it's gonna be x2, and if it's greater than x3, it's gonna be x3. The same goes for the high one. So we replace L with H, boom. And then the same goes for Y. Uh, we replace um, X with Y. There we go. So in here we have a we have a range, but it, this range can go outside of the canvas. So we also have to check for that. Uh, so let me see. A clamp LX. Uh, high x l y high y to the boundaries of the canvas right so because i don't really want to do it right now to be fair <laughs> right. so uh, l y or equal to high y mm -mm. okay l x mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
Taking CG class and the first topic in GL stuff is Barry Sandia coordinates. This is so cool. I'm so glad that you live in the first country, first world country, and have an access to the good education and can just like afford to learn all of that like that. This is so cool. Pretty cool. I wish I had something like that. Unfortunately, I was born in a third world country and just don't have this. And I have to learn everything yourself, as you can see. It kind of sucks. But it is what it is. Life isn't fair. Uh, all right. So what do we have in here? Okay, so th this is the bear standing coordinates. And then uh, what we're going to do is uh, Olivet's pixel. Right? Olivet's pixel OC, uh, X and Y. And what we're going to put in here. Uh, so we are basically merging uh, some other stuff uh, so let me let me see so this is a mix colors right so this is a mix colors and what colors are we mixing we are mixing c1 c2 and c3 and we have to provide the u1 u2 and the determinant right something like that so the mix colors actually computes u3 automatically for you so it doesn't really care but we compute u3 as well so we'll see how it goes uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, oh, another thing, this is actually kind of dangerous, so we have to be, yeah. Because it's a, it's a maximum, we're computing the maximum here, not the minimum. Okay, so let me try to rebuild the entire thing, but when we are rebuilding this entire stuff, right, when we are rebuilding this entire stuff, we need to rebuild specifically the tests, right? We need to rebuild specifically the tests. Okay, so it doesn't uh, compile because of some minor errors. Um, okay, taking some time. And uh, let's update the weird triangle thingy and let's see what we ended up with. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we'll reread that. And looks like it worked. What the fuck? This is actually perfect. <laughs> it's a little bit like. Well, I mean, yeah, I can see why this was not actually rendered, because, like, it went past the center. Man, this is so cool, and it solves so many problems. I really like this approach. I really like it. So, that's so cool. Uh, okay, so let me try to rebuild, like, literally everything and see if we didn't break any of the demos, right? And also any of the tests and whatnot. All right, so li let's literally go ahead and rebuild everything. Let's go! How is the performance compared? I have no idea! I don't have benchmarks. And I'm not sure if I care about performance right now. What I care about is bugs. Right. So what this approach gives me is less bugs, that's for sure. And also less problems. And we're gonna think about performance later. Uh, okay. So... Now, I can also try to run the tests. Alright, so let's run the tests and see if we didn't break anything. Nothing was broken except the triangle uh, order flip. Alright, so let me see what was expected. Okay, so basically this entire thing just checks for the, uh, for the correct order of the colors of the, um, of the vertices, because we were doing like a sorting of these things. Alright, so this was expected, and what is the actual? There is not that much difference, so I suspect the difference is on the edges with the pixels, because now the edges are kind of like c computed differently. So specifically for this kind of situations, we have the diff. You can compute the diff uh, of this entire thing, and the diff shows you, yeah, 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 so as you can see, these are the pixels that are different. So we can literally see the difference in the behavior, right? So, and essentially in this particular situation, I'm gonna assume that this is, uh, this is the correct behavior from now on. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna say, okay, update the tests. So now they're gonna contain the new behavior. Well, uh, there was no reason to regenerate all of the tests, but I mean, it, it kind of works. Uh, now, now everything is updated, right? Cool, uh, so the tests are passing and let's try to take a look at some of the demos. Right, so let's take a look at the first demo that demonstrates the triangle. Uh, and it's sec-faulted. And I know why. Who knows why it's sec-faulted? <laughs> because uh, of that specific to-do that I was lazy to do. Right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we need to, we need to think about the boundaries. <laughs> 
God damn it. God damn boundaries. Okay. So essentially, uh, what I can do, if LX is less than zero, I can just say LX is uh, equal zero, right? Something like that. Actually, it probably makes sense to, to do it like something here. So first we figure out the minimum and maximum and then we are start, start clamping it. Right, if LX is greater or equal than OC width, well, here is an interesting thing. Here, we know for sure that LX, LX is less or equal than HX. So that means if this thing is greater than OC uh, dot width, that means HX is greater or equal uh, than OC dot width. So in that case, there is no reason to even render anything. Like, what's the point of rendering anything? Right, and the same goes for Y, uh, right, almost. And not only for Y, but for H. Uh, in case of this thing being less than zero, that means this thing is also less than zero, so we're gonna return. Um, and if this thing is greater or equal than OC width, we just need to say it's equal to OC width uh, minus one. There we go. So this is what we have, and we need to repeat the same thing for uh, Y. So I'm gonna replace X with Y, and I'm gonna clearly replace width with height boom there we go so <laughs> that's that's a pretty sophisticated uh, you know normalization so essentially we are just first before uh, like trying to end like iterate anything we're figuring out the boundaries of this entire thing and uh yeah so taking into account the boundaries of the canvas as well because we don't want to accidentally go outside of the canvas but as soon as we figure it out uh, we can just safely iterate this rectangle and don't worry about anything don't worry about like you know sec uh, holes or anything like that. okay so let's try to rebuild this entire stuff <clears throat> so oh okay so this is a classic situation uh, okay size t Okay, then. Similarly, we're gonna go in here. Similarly, we're gonna go in here. Cool. Alright, rebuilding the um, examples. Actually, they're called demos. Not the demos as in democracy, but the demos that demonstrate something. Alright. Um, so let me double check that everything's okay. And now something has changed yet again. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual behavior. Uh, and what is the difference? Oh. That's a very interesting difference. What was there? Uh, so the actual thing, um, we don't have anything in there, okay. But the expected thing, the previous behavior, ooh. Oh, I see what's going on. Since we're not, we were not uh, checking the boundaries, the thing was actually overflowing and touching the memory in places that it, it's not supposed to touch. And obviously it put a dot where it shouldn't be put. So, and you can clearly see it in here. It's actually kind of cool that the, the difference actually shows you that. Right, so yeah, the difference is just like this bright color that you can instantly see. So that's pretty convenient. Okay, it's pretty cool. Uh, and let's actually update that specific test case. Um, right, so. Uh, it's actually triangle or the flip. Yeah, so we regenerated this entire thing and let's just go ahead and just run it. Everything seems to be fine. Cool. So let's do build demos and uh, let's take a look at the triangle SDL. Uh, there we go. So I don't really feel any performance degradation. It's on the level of feeling, right? So I don't have any numbers, but so far it looks okay, right? So it it's not definitely not slower than the previous uh, approach or anything like that. Uh, right, so let's take a look at some other things like 3D triangle. Right, so here's the 3D triangle. Um, works fine. What about textured 3D triangle? Okay. So the textured thing is actually rendered with a scan line still. But I mean, it's, it's fine. Okay. 
For someone that's just joined and is you, what are you building and what would you use this for? I'm building a software renderer uh, that does 3D completely on CPU and I'm gonna use it to make you jealous. Damn, because you can't do that. I'm joking, sorry. All right. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to the Tuning channel. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and um, maybe do a compilation. Or maybe not. But that actually finally fixed the, the bug. Maybe I should rename this entire bug because it's not really weird triangle bug. Because I'm pretty sure that when I look at this entire thing after, like after a month or so, I won't remember what this thing is all about. Right. Uh, so I'm definitely, I definitely need to rename this test. Right. So weird triangle bug. Right. So we already fixed it. And what is that? Um, very centric overflow uh, yeah let's call it very centric overflow and let's try to compile this entire thing <clears throat> do, 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 do. so this is okay so it complains that it can't find that uh yeah so very centric uh, overflow right. so this is a very centric overflow taking some time because we have a very slow computer computer mm -hmm. do you plan to render all the shapes at once in one canvas iteration loop I what does it change does it change anything asymptotically probably probably not so I don't know my plan is going to be uh, for now, uh, right now, right? So whatever I'm doing right now doesn't mean that it's going to be like that forever. Uh, something may, may change. But right now, I plan to just iterate all the shapes and render each shape separately. Uh, right. And as I render each shape separately, uh, I'm also going to be doing additional things because I will need to do the one over Z interpolation, then also color interpolation, and then also some z some depth testing and so on and so forth so we'll see how it goes yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. did you implement the test suite engine offline using cpp macros only what does it mean to use cpp macros only like no if you take a look at the test suite so this is the entire testing engine, what you referred to, right? And as you can see, there's more than just macros. I, I don't really understand the phrase macros only <laughs> because there is no a single useful C program that is macros only. It's like, it doesn't work like that, I think. So there's a bit of macros, but it's not macros only. There's a lot of like a regular coding here. Um, okay, whatever. So, uh, I think I want to commit this stuff, right? So I'm going to try to run the tests and see what's missing. Yeah, there we go. So very standard overflow. We can't find that. Uh, there we go. All right, that's cool. So I'm going to remove this thing. Do I want to include that stuff? I'm not sure. So this is basically testing. So this one, I feel like checking for overflow here is not particularly important. Right. But it's important to do this thing. So I'm going to stage that. So in terms of tests, it's going to have that. Uh-huh. So... Very centric overflow. So we don't need that. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, fix very centric overflow bug. And we're going to push that right into the repo. Okay, so let's try to apply that 
to here. Right, so this is basically what we are trying to render. And uh, maybe I'm gonna actually save the original image just to see if we have any of the overflows in here. You know what I mean? Because there's a little bit of box in here and I literally wanna compare two images like before and after uh, employing the uh, this specific trick. So this one is gonna be old. Uh, right, so this is gonna be PNG. And let's just go ahead and go here. So what we're doing here uh, is, yeah, we're just iterating through all of that, blah, blah, blah. So we have to do something slightly differently. Mm -hmm. Welp, we'll probably have to do this kind of thing. All right. Mm-hmm. Interestingly, maybe it makes sense to put this entire thing into a separate function. Um, yeah, because it's it looks kind of weird. So essentially, what I want to be able to do, I want to be able to do uh, all of that normalize um, triangle, right? Normalize triangle. You provide the triangle, and it will figure out the boundaries and just give you lx, hx, hx, and ly, uh, hy, right, and of course you'll have to pass them by the pointer, have to pass them by the pointer, oh my god, okay, so this one's gonna be void, olivet's def, right, and let's actually put all of that stuff in there, like so, um, so this one is more gonna be like this and this is going to be more like this uh, and let's define this thing lx high x ly high y high y is set and let's copy paste this entire thing mm -hmm. so here we pass the triangle itself here we pass the output so this is how we normalize. Furthermore, uh, normalization may mean that the triangle is invisible. So what we have to do, we also have to return a boolean, right? And when we return, we actually return false, indicating that you, you can't draw anything here. And then we return true in here. There we go. So and then we can say if this entire thing is visible, only then, only then, we're going to try to... Uh, to render it like that. There we go. Cool. So that will probably simplify things, I hope. Uh, it would be also kind of nice to take this entire stuff and, you know, put it behind the function as well. That would be kind of cool. Mm -mm -mm. So, but maybe not. Okay. So, uh, let's actually copy paste this entire thing. Uh -huh. We're gonna put this stuff in here. We're gonna put this stuff in here and uh, something like this. So that also kind of means that we have to, yeah, we have to create the uh, the variables x1, y1, and so on and so forth. So p1x. Place one, uh, two, place, eh, place two, three. And here, we're gonna just do create plus x, y. Right, so that's what we got. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And instead of OC, as far as I know here, we have, oh, it's also called OC. Yeah, there we go. So this is the code that performs all of this stuff. So we wanna actually move it in here. There we go. So let me maybe merge this into, I think it's kind of a long thing, but uh, it's just more convenient for me to, to think about it this way. So this one is gonna be U3, right. And I suppose that is basically it. That is basically it. So I just need to remove now the obsolete code 
Um, so what's interesting is that this is already like a third iteration of rendering a triangle, right? Which is, in my opinion, totally normal, right? Because we're exploring, right? So f at first, I, the scan line was like my first approximation, like naive approximation, how to render the triangle. And the more I try to render different triangles and use that for different use cases, the more I realized that it's limited and I was trying to, uh, to come up with uh, with other things i wonder if the stream is still up right because i just got disconnected uh and i hope i'm connected again uh, okay so that was weird so i suppose everything's fine uh, i suppose everything's fine okay cool mm, so that should be all right oh you know what's cool maybe we'll be able to also compare the performance the thing that people keep asking me about in the chat like but what about the performance is it faster is it slower i want to know how we're supposed to measure our pps if we don't have a concrete numbers okay so we also need to go through through this entire thing so we need to replace like lx with all x lx yeah there we go and uh, also we replace hx with hx and the same goes for ly uh, ly boom. We replace hy hy boom uh, we also need to know the width and height of the canvas for which we're clamping everything so i think i'm going to do something like width uh, size t height uh, we replace OC width is just going to be width, boom. Uh -huh. And then we replace OC height and just height, boom. So, and of course, it's going to fail in the places where we use this entire thing, but that is fine. That is totally, in all its totality, fine. All right, so what would they, do we have in here? Also the same thing OC width, OC height. Mm, uh, height okay so we have what do we have what do we have a boom there you go already already okay so it, it compiles right so it compiles that means we are ready to run this thing and see how miserably it will fail uh so uh, let's uh, go let's uh, go so i'm gonna do uh maybe build one more time just in case and then T, ah, teapot, and oh, I don't even have an executable. Uh, whatever. So I'm also going to try to time that. Oh, it's, it's a view object. I forgot. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. Okay, view object. Show me the view object. That was fast because I didn't provide any input. Okay, teapot object. I don't know what I'm waiting for. It's actually slower. <laughs> That's what's funny, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's actually slower than uh, what we have before. Uh, yeah, it's definitely slower. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, what we've got. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, here it is. Okay. I think we fixed it. Oh, all right. It actually looks better. Well, I mean, almost. There is a little bit of a Z fighting in here, right? There is definitely Z fighting. Um, okay, so I wonder if we can get rid of this Z fighting. Um, so remember that the Z testing that we're doing, view of the GC. Uh, so we're doing strictly greater. So I'm not sure if it's easy to do the Z fighting. All right, so uh, let's compare it with the old one. If you take a look at the old one, um, well, that doesn't look, this is not an old one. Uh, why are they all updated? That is so weird. And why this thing is, sm well, I mean, it's a little round. I think something weird has, oh, or not. I think I literally lost the previous version to compare it with. Yeah, I lost the previous version. So, okay, maybe we can try to 
do something like this and do this like that. It's taking some time. Oh, and it's rebuilding everything. This is annoying. Oh my god. And it's not even rebuilt the original one. Ah, how can I easily compare that without doing too many actions? Oh my god. This is annoying. Okay, so let me let me see. So I'm gonna try to pop it out. Uh, so there's local changes. What kind of local changes are you talking about? Pop. Yes. Local changes not following, but I literally just... Okay, so what if I try to do something like this? Okay, cool. So essentially I need to stash only one specific thing, but it's super hard. It is super hard to do it this way. Okay, so can I just do something like this and just do something like this? Right, so I'm gonna just commit uh, this thing. Build view OBG. Okay, cool. That's what I want. Now that allows me to stash some of these things. All right, and I'm gonna uh, sort of go here, rebuild this entire thing the old way. All right, I'm rebuilding the old way. Okay, view obg. I'm providing the t pot obg. Okay, and it's 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 faster by the way. We can actually check check. Well, it's not that much faster to be fair. Yeah, it's it's also difficult to compare because we are um, streaming. We're streaming. Okay, so let's take a look at the old one. And there we go. So we have all sorts of bugs in here. Right, and so all sorts of bugs in here, you can clearly see them. So now what I want to do, right, so I want to preserve that old old thing, right, so I'm going to say it is old. I hope it is not going to override that because we clearly see all of these bugs in here. Uh, right, so now I'm going to get rid of that and uh, let me take that and just like pop this out and... Uh, um, in the build as well. I'm gonna rebuild this entire thing. Okay. And then we're gonna do this thing, which creates a new one without the box. Right, so we have these kind of things. I'm not sure what they are about, but we definitely have a better situation in here. So and if I take a look at the old version. You can clearly see this something like noisy and it's just like, it's really weird. I really wish I could compare them side by side. So I can try to do that. I can try to use Fech. Uh, right, so I'm gonna use it for this one. Yeah, so this is Fech. And for the new one. Right. Oh, come on, Emacs. Don't ask questions. Okay, so uh, anti-aliasing disable and anti-aliasing disable. Can you see? Can you see the difference between them? So this is the new one. Left is the new one, and uh, right is the old one with the very sending overflow. You can actually see the overflows in the pixels. You can literally see them. Uh, so this is what we managed to fix actually. Yeah, it looks much nicer. It's actually way better. Uh, is that Pogue? Yes, it is Pogue. Oh, by the way, I remember when we rendered this thing for the first time, I rendered all of the polygons with the same color, right? And with the same color, it was actually clearly visible, uh, separate polygons. But since we kind of fixed the Beristanian coordinates, how is it going to look like? Uh, let's actually try to render it with the, with the solid color now, without the uh, rainbow stuff or anything like that. So I'm actually really curious. Um, so you obg 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 So here I'm gonna say okay use the blue color the original color that we had All right so let's actually try to do something like this and I'm going to rebuild this entire stuff Okay All right and so let's take a look 
But look how smooth this motherfucker is. Yo. Look at that. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Imagine if we also make it rotate. Well, I mean, it's probably not going to take so, so... It's not going to be very fast, right? But who knows? It's a solid blue. Yeah, it's a solid blue uh, teapot. But let's go back to rainbow thingy. Teapot poggers. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, freaking this. Uh, okay, yeah, so we have that. So, um, let's try to finally animate that. How about that? Let's try to animate that. So we have a low polygon um, version of the um, of the cup, right? So it's going to be sodium cup. Uh, let's see how it is rendered. Okay. It's really interesting for me that it still takes the same amount of time, which makes me think that maybe it has something to do with with saving the PNG. Wait a second. Maybe it has something to do with saving the PNG. Uh, so what if we don't save the PNG? All right. So because it's kind of surprising because the amount of uh, triangles is actually quite dramatic. Um, it's faster, I'd say. Maybe. Yeah. So I think the majority of the time is actually saving all of that stuff and teapot OBG. Yeah, it's actually relatively fast. And furthermore, we also have additional time that loads up the the model. So maybe we can even pull off a reasonable a reasonable frame rate with this teapot. That's actually rather interesting. So yeah, that's that's cool. So we'll see how it goes. Um, all right. So let me go back to view OBG and just enable this thing back. Uh, just enable this thing back. Mm. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. So two point PNG. So this is your cup, by the way. Going back, I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen it already, right? But uh, this is how it looks like. We can't see the handle yet, uh, but I'm pretty sure in the future we're going to be able to see it at some point. Uh, thank you so much for making this model. This is actually super cool. I wonder. There should be a way to store the colors of the uh, triangles in the OBG file. We can actually add support for, for the colors on this file. That would be actually kind of cool, because the original file has like colors and stuff. Um, okay, so essentially what I need to do now is I probably need to make some sort of a demo, right? Some sort of a demo that just like loads up very specific thing. Uh, though demos don't really have the initialize method anymore i remember that i edited it at some point but then i removed it for some reason uh, so we'll have to extend the demo and i also would like to make a small break and refill my cup of tea so let's make a small break and after the break we're going to try to animate that um all right, so let's go ahead and try to uh, implement something. So here's an interesting thing. Uh, what I need to do with this demo of rotating um, object is that I need to first load the, the model somehow. But our demos do not have an ability to have some sort of initialization code. I put it in at some point and then I took it out because it was not needed. Uh, what's interesting is that some of, the, some of our demos, some of our demos, uh, have use images right so for instance if i do something like a triangle uh, demo triangle uh, texture right so as you can see here we have a texture you need to load texture first but we don't have a mechanism for initialization of the demos you just start the demo and you start rendering so how do we even load this image well we actually bake that image into the executable. The way we bake it, we have a, um, a utility that allows us to compile PNG images into C code, right? So essentially we have uh, assets in here, right? So we have some images like Sadge or Sodium Pog, and we compile them down to C, right? So we have assets in here, and uh, this is how Sodium Pog looks like. So it takes PNG and it turns it into that. 
You see what I mean? Right, it turns it into that. And then you just include that file and you already have a loaded image, like you already have an array of pixels that you can render. No, rend no loading is required. I'm thinking. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? You know? Can, can we do something similar? Is it is it easier like that? Uh, in Yeah, include tpod.obg, right? Is that actually a good idea? I don't know. So I can try to do that, but I'm a little bit afraid that it's going to take more time than just like loading it in. But I already have a code that parses the obg files. I can just copy paste it into the new utility and that's going to be it. So what I'm thinking is that I'm probably going to take that journey, right? So, uh, yeah, let's actually implement the obg file compiler. Uh, I'm going to take the sodium cup low poly, right? And I'm going to put it into the assets, right? So here is the assets and uh, low poly. I'm literally going to move this thing in here. All right. And we're going to have obg to c, which is going to be super confusing for Windows people, right? Because on Windows, obg is an object file, meaning that the file that contains compiled C code, right? <laughs> so I'm not sure how good of an idea that is, but yeah. So argc char argv, right? So what we want to have in here is uh, two files, input and output. We're going to keep it simple. So argc uh, less than three, uh, we're going to say something like fprintf std error, error, um, <clears throat> no input, output is provided <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> okay so this is going to be one uh and maybe it also makes sense to provide the example of the usage right so this is going to be something like this so i'm not going to have any fancy command line interface i can implement that off screen uh so this one is going to be basically obg to c uh, input uh, obg uh, output uh, output C. That's basically what we want to have. Uh, okay, so we can have something like file. It depends on actually how we, uh, like what's the code we use for loading things. So essentially what I'm going to do, I'm literally going to copy paste the code that parses this entire stuff. Uh huh. Well, that's actually pretty cool. All right, so vertices, faces, yeah, let's copy paste it in here. And let's go ahead and try to literally compile that. So build a search. What's interesting is that for the for building the assets, we already have like a separate procedure, right? So in here, uh, we're building PNG to C, and then we're using PNG to C to build all of the images. We can do a similar thing for OBG to C. Right, so I'm gonna do something like uh, PNG OBG to C, and it's gonna put it into the build as well. Uh, right, so then we're going to do build um, obg to c. So the input, the input is going to be the, um, I suppose, assets, uh, sodium, uh -huh, low poly obg. And the output is going to be build assets, uh, sodium cup, low poly obg dot c. There we go. So that's what we're going to have. So I'm going to actually disable this thing for now, right? Because that's not what we're testing. So we're only going to be building assets. And for the assets, we're going to be only building the object files. Maybe at some point, I'm going to actually separate these two things into separate procedures as well. So we can also control what I'm building in here. Uh, right, so let's actually give it a try and let's see what we have. So error no, uh, I need to include some of these things in here. Uh, yep, so that's what we're gonna have. So I'm gonna just go through the compilation errors and just try to fix them. Right. So that's what I'm trying to do. Just go through the compilation error and try to fix them. So read the entire file. We need to uh, put this thing there as well. So I just copy it. Uh, so here's basically how I do that. I just copy the chunk of code that I want to have in that particular program. And I don't try to fix that or adapt it. I just copy pasted it and then I try to compile it and see what it complains about. And I bring in the pieces of code that it complains about. And then I know how much exactly I need to copy paste it. So basically, yeah, it's kind of like a compiler assisted refactoring, like a similar situation, but it's not refactoring, it's just moving code from one place to another. Right, so error no, 
So essentially we probably need these things, uh, the same things in here. Context a lock. Uh, so then that requires all of these things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, so what's going to be the next thing? Uh, default arena. Oh, okay. So it needs the um, the arena. Arena is basically the memory allocator, the custom memory allocator that they have in here. Uh, mem copy. Uh, I wonder why I don't have a mem copy. Is it because I didn't have string? It's really weird. That's probably why. Yeah. Return the fur. Didn't I? I actually implemented it, so I probably should have actually put it a little bit higher. But why does it say that a return the fur is not available? Because it is in fact available. Uh, use of and declared identifier result. Ah, that is very interesting. Oh, I see, because this is what we have. So it has to be in here, and then this is, has to be in here. Error driven development. It's not particular development, it's just like a compiler assisted refactoring, that's what I call it. Uh, SV implementation. Code. SV.h. Because it actually makes a lot of sense. The compiler knows more about the code that you do. So you can exploit the compiler errors um, to get insights into the code. Uh, what's interesting is that I feel like we should not call. Maybe we should go into the habit of not calling the compiler diagnostics as errors. Right, so here's an interesting thing. Like calling them errors kind of implies that this is something bad. In reality, the compiler diagnostics that they put out um, are not really bad. They're part of the output of the compiler because the developer and the compiler form this sort of conversational loop. Right, so the, the developer gives you the code and the compiler tells you all the inconsistencies without, within that code so you can go and fix them and you constantly like have this development loop and it's actually a very important loop. Um, right, so and for some reason people like in our programming culture people have a perception that this is something really really bad. Maybe because it's called error and error is something bad. Maybe we should get into a habit of not calling them errors, but I mean, I already call them errors, so it's kind of difficult to get out of that habit. And the thing that in the universities, um, on the computer science courses, they also framed the errors, the compiler diagnostic always uh, framed as something really bad and you have to avoid at all costs for some reason, right? And if you have compilation errors, you're somehow a bad programmer. Like, it's just like, I've, I've seen mentality like that, and it's such a weird mentality. And maybe this is why um, dynamic languages are so popular, because they give you perception that you can never have this, you know, bad compiler errors, so you can never feel like a failed developer, or something like that. Because all of these errors, they're gonna be delayed, so they're not obvious right away, or something like that, I don't know. It's kinda weird. When you're using a D, you're also uh, doing compiler error de uh, during development. Which ID? Mm -mm. ID is a very abstract thing, actually. Mm -mm. Different IDs can do different things. Okay, whatever. I don't know why all of a sudden people switch to IDs. It's really interesting. I guess it's, it's a common trend uh, within the developer community, right? So you're trying to tell them about something about programming and they always try to stir the conversation towards text editors and ID for some reason. Okay. It's just like <laughs> the developers these days are only concerned about the program that allows them to input the text. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Anyway, so um, what do we have? Uh, vertices. Okay, so we also need to bring all of these uh, like data structures. You know what I mean? Uh, all of these data structures. So this is the vectors, the uh, some other things, and vertices, the faces, and some other things. So we'll probably need dynamic uh, dynamic arrays as well. Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, by the way, we can also pre-process the object in here, right? Because one of the things we do is 
and we try to align the object uh, within the box that you, uh, you're going to see in there. Right, so essentially we can do that in the object to C compiler, which is rather cool, I think. All right, so. Mm -mm -mm. All right. We have so width and height. Uh, project. We don't really need projection right now, so projection is not part of the thing I'm trying to do. Return defer. It's not happy with return defer, but why? And defer and declare defer. Okay, so let's actually put it in here. Oh, and by the way, oh, it actually did something. <laughs> All right. Um. Oh shit! It actually worked. So yeah. Isn't that cool? The code that I just copy-pasted simply worked. It worked in one place, and when I copy-pasted it, copy -pasted it to a different place, it still worked. <laughs> That's what I achieved. Anyway, uh, so, okay. Um, what's funny is that I think we should rename this to something like remap. Oh, I, I didn't include that. <clears throat> so it happened so quickly i just it caught me a little bit of guard so uh, uh, so i need to think what i'm gonna do next uh right so what i need to do now is i just need to iterate through all of the vertices right so i'm iterating through all of the vertices i'm just like doing the count uh plus plus i uh all right and in here um i need to print them right so in my case the vertex the vertex is going to be um, right vertex um, vertex 3D, or it's a vector 3D, so vertices, okay, uh, essentially what I can do, F, 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 uh, new line, vertices, item, S, I, X, and I just copy paste all of those things in here, Y, uh, Z, so maybe I'm going to do something like ver vector, vector 3, V. Uh -huh. And I'm going to just boom, boom, V, boom. So and if we try to compile this entire thing, right? So these are all of the vertices, right? So we want to put them into the array. This is why I just like made them like this. So that means we're going to wrap it around like so. Uh, right, so this is the opening uh, parent, this is closing parent, uh, right, and we probably want to also uh, indent it, one, two, three, four, right, there we go, uh, there we go, this is almost an array, right, this is almost an array, um, and we probably want to put a semicolon in here, right, so to close that specific array, so as you can see, we're already generating C code, and then uh, what I want to do, I want to have a float, uh, vertices, so we're going to have how many of them? We're going to have this amount of vertices and uh, we're going to have three of them in here. Um, so in the amount is going to be vertices count. A boom. So this is what we got. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. So the next thing uh, after that, we can print F uh, size T vertices count. Uh, all right, is going to be equal to zu uh, vertices count. There we go. So this is the code. So we did that for the vertices. Now we need to do that for the faces. Uh, Isleo, thank you so much for five tier, uh, like five, five gifted tier one subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so here we're gonna have faces, and faces is act actually array uh, of three ints. All right, so it's kind of similar. Right, so this is faces, uh, this is faces, this is faces, and this is a face. Uh, I probably want to call it F, but this one is going to be something like this. What's interesting is that we have an opportunity to get rid of those uh, pesky uh, one based indexing by subtracting one. Right, there we go. And then here we have uh, faces, and here we have faces. There we go. So uh, something went wrong. Uh, X, okay, so this is A, uh, B, and C. There we go. So this is what we got. Right, so this is the faces, uh, and uh, this is the vertices, right? So essentially, that is basically it, almost. 
<clears throat> we just need to put some sort of like a include guard uh, just in case if not defined uh, obg.h uh, I'm gonna make all these guards and names customizable after the stream right because it's not really uh, the point of what I'm trying to do uh, and if and this is the new thing right there we go so yeah the only thing we need to do now is to just to redirect all of that stuff to a file uh, and we're gonna be good to go all right so let's create a function that is something like generate code and it will accept vertices uh, right so vs uh, let's call them vertices because it will make it easier to copy paste this thing and then faces uh, faces we don't plan to change them so i'm going to just do a constant but what's interesting is that uh, we also need to accept the output right so this is going to be the output we can now just take this entire thing uh, and copy paste it in here right so then we generate code output vertices uh, face you know what um, I think I can even do the following thing. I can accept them by the value because they are actually very lightweight structures. Right, if you take a look at this entire thing, it's a very lightweight structure that consists of three numbers. The first number is a pointer, uh, then capacity, then the count. So we can actually count, uh, copy it. So that way I don't have to modify the code inside of the generate code. Right, because now like we don't dereference anything anymore. So this is actually pretty cool. All right, so now what I need to do, I need to open the file, uh, the output file. So if open, uh, and then we're going to have something like output out file path, uh, and we open it for writing in binary, right? For writing in binary. If out is equal to null, we couldn't open it properly. So we have to say something like that, this the error, uh, right? Error could uh, not write file this because of this there we go so this is going to be out file path and the reason is str error uh, error no and then return one there we go mm -mm. so and actually we're gonna do defer cool so and in the generate code we want to kind of replace print f this with f print f out this moving yeah boom okay let's try to compile this entire thing so we don't have out file path so let's quickly fix that so this is going to be const char arg v2 boom so and if we try to go into this specific file um here it is so here is the file uh all right so i don't remember when we compiling the assets when we are compiling the emacs assets so it's c it's c as well all right that's totally fine so there's a little bit of lack of the space in there so this is something that we have to fix uh generate code all right so this is one and when when it comes to faces this is the second one okay cool so uh let's go ahead and try to include that uh so we're gonna create a demo right so let's create a demo called cup 3d right cup 3d.c and when it comes to demos we just have to do this boilerplate so we probably need to have width and height that's for sure background uh, we're going to do that a little bit later so first in the most important thing we need to have the render uh, right so then we create this entire thing then we fill this entire thing with that and then we just return the the canvas right so we simply return that specific canvas okay so let me try to now add uh, this thing to the uh, to the demos right so here's the demos and for the demos we have cup 3d so i'm not going to build all of the demos right so we're only going to build cup 3d and for this specific thing do i want to build wasm and i think i want to build everything just to test it for now right okay let's see 
So what do we have? Pixels, we didn't allocate any pixels. Let's quickly allocate them. So this is how we do that. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So we have a new thing in here, which is fine. I can, I can fix that. That's cool. So and here's the moment of truth. I want to include assets. Uh, Sodin, cup, something, something. Uh, let me give, uh, let me take the actual name, right? Uh -huh. So we want to include this specific thing and see if it compiles successfully. Uh, okay, so there's a little bit of a problems in here. Uh, right, so there should be equals. Yeah, that's right. So let's quickly fix that as well. OBG uh, C. So here's an interesting thing. I'm fixing generated code. Right? <laughs> so it's um, it's kind of really interesting. So it's like one layer of meta. I just um, generated some stuff and then it fails and I'm fixing the generator because of that. So it's uh, like, yeah, it's a one layer of meta in here. Uh -huh. And then I need to find the place where that mistake was. This is actually really cool. I really like that. <laughs> it's a compiler suite of refactoring, but yeah, with a one layer of meta. Oh, right. So there's a... Oh, it doesn't like that there's new li no new line in here. I mean, sure. Thank you for telling me that. Uh, okay. Look at that. So we managed to bake the model into the executable. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. Mm -mm. Man, that is so cool. Okay, so we can go even further and just um, copy paste the thing that renders everything. Right. So here's the here's the actual code that renders this thing, and I'm gonna go to cup 3D and I'm gonna just put it in here and follow the compilation errors yet again. So compiler assistive factoring and shit. Uh, okay. Let's see how it goes. So we don't have faces, uh, but in reality we kind of do. I just need to replace faces with faces count. Right, and there you go. So that's basically what's going on here. Okay, so then we take a face, um, but we don't really need a face, do we? Uh, zone uh, 84 with P, thank you so much for Twitch Prime. I hope it gets to you. Eh, it's probably never going to get to me, but thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, so let us see, let us see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, what it doesn't like, okay, vector 3D, vector 3D. Oh man, like we'll have to introduce a vector 3D thingy. We'll just have to do that at some point. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So, because we have vector 3 and vector 2 defined in the obg to c compiler, and then we need the same thing in here too. So, the question is like, how do we, how are we going to approach that? Do we duplicate the definitions? Let's, let's try to duplicate the definitions, sure. Uh, vector 3, where is the definition of vector 3? I don't see that. Uh, vector, did I, did I literally remove that? I feel like, I feel I did a oopsie doopsie somewhere. Why did I remove them? I, when I try to copy paste them, I literally remove them. That's so dumb. Uh, okay. Just a second. Oh man, and I didn't compile, really. I just realized that I didn't actually compile I mean, commit the change with the new way of rendering triangles. But I still save the... Okay, that's fine. <sighs> All right. So I'm starting to make very stupid mistakes. Very, very stupid mistakes. So... All right. So let me try to do that. Okay, what do we have? And the problem here is that the vertices are not vector threes, right? So they are not. So though we do have this kind of thing where I can just do V A B C, and the thing is, 
make a vector 3. We can make a vector 3 out of that, which means that we can do something like make, make vector 3 and just something like this. Um, 0, 1, 2, right. Which kind of sucks. But in all fairness, I don't see any other way to do that easily. Right, so probably we'll probably have to do that. But at the same time, I think this is the only place where we like do that. We refer to that once and then we just forget about it. So I think it's it's actually fine to do this way. Uh, so let's actually try to do it this way. I think it's gonna work. And this is not A, B, and C, it's actually zero. Zero. One, one, two, two, uh -huh. mm. zero, one, two. All right, so it's something like this. Okay, what else do we have? Remap teapot. Uh, remap. And this is something rather interesting. We can do the remapping we can do the remapping uh, in the obg to c this is what i was talking about all along um, yeah so let's actually go ahead and do that in obg to c i'm going to move it in here right and then um, after we read everything, after we read everything, we're going to iterate through the vertices, uh, right? So this is going to be vertex, vertices count plus plus i, right? Then, then vertices items i, and remap uh, teapot. I should probably name it because it's not uh, about teapot anymore, you know what I mean? Uh, right, so it's more like about any object. Um, Okay, so remap teapot, it didn't like that because we also have to provide uh, the boundaries that we've got from reading this entire thing, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so what do we have in here? And so we don't need that stuff anymore in here. Right, so we definitely don't need this stuff anymore. Uh -huh. Anything else? Z buffer. Okay, so we need to allocate Z buffer. Z buffer. Okay. We have pixels. Mm. So here it is. Okay. This must have mother flipper compiled, surprisingly enough. So it's simply compiled, which is a little bit worrying. Isn't that easy? So we just copy pasted some code, and uh, is it going to just work? Uh, so what is it called? Uh, cup 3D or 3D? It didn't. Oh, because it's part of the demo. Uh, cup 3D SDL. Uh, we can't see shit in this mist. I wonder why. We're not even rotating anything, right? We're not even rotating anything. But I managed to see something. Yeah, 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 so we saw something, but not... Oh! Here is the... Here's the interesting thing. Mm, what exactly going on in here? So we're remapping this stuff. But do we properly update this thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a second. When I do obg to c remember how I said that we can also get rid of that pesky minus one thingy? Um... Yeah, so I'm not sure if we have to do it in here or somewhere somewhere else. Why do we do that on the level of generation? Right, so what if we don't do that on the level of generation, but rather somewhere here? Uh, so that's one of the things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be faces. Faces items i uh, minus b c. All right, so mm, that's cool and all. Mm -hmm, so we're gonna be recompiling this thing. Mm -hmm. 
Let me double check the assets. Uh, so in poly, uh, Emacs, come on, come on, I believe in So everything seems to be fine. Does it see anything negative? Here it's fine to have negative because these are the vertices. And uh, for the cup 3D. Okay, so so far everything's fine. So I didn't see any any unusual stuff. Though, yeah, I'm an idiot. So this is not how you're supposed to construct those things, right? Uh, right. So because you have a face uh, eye, first of all, you have a face eye, and within the face eye, you have the first index, right? So something like this. Um, yeah, so this is the face eye, um, the vertex of the first eye, and its coordinate. Yeah. Uh -huh. And maybe we can even do something like this. This is basically face eye. Yeah. I think this is how we have to do that. I think. Mm -hmm. So this is face I. And we take the first index for the first index vertex. Yeah, th this is this is kind of like obscure in some sense, but we can make it less obscure, I suppose, by just doing face I uh, zero, right? Then B one, and then C two, right? And then this is A, this is B, this is C. Something like that. Mm -hmm. So this is faces. Anything else? Okay, cool. Um, demos cup 3D SDL. We saw a cup for a second and then it just faded away, which raises the question what the hell is going on? Do we modify it? Oh, I think I know. I think I know what is going on. We need to clean the Z buffer every time we render. Yes, that's for sure. So mem uh, CPY Z buffer zero size of Z buffer. Yeah, that's quite important, right? Because this is the depth uh, thingy. Oh, and of course we need to keep rebuilding it every time. Sure. So something is wrong. So mem CPY, we probably need to include string to be able to do that. So this is going to be string.h. Um, strings, wait. Oh shit, okay. So because we're compiling it with wasm, if you know what I mean. We compile it with wasm, which means that we probably have to do some stuff like uh, y, maybe i, zero less than width multiplied by high plus i um z buffer i uh, zero yeah, yeah, yeah so we compile it with uh, like to web assembly and it doesn't have the standard library okay finally all right so it works um cool now we need to make this thing rotate so this is actually a very interesting question. How exactly are we going to be rotating this entire thing? Uh, so we need to maintain the angle. Um, we already do that in some of the places. Uh, for example, in th just 3D. Uh, so there is an angle, which is a global thing. Right? So we're going to put this angle in here. And we constantly update that angle. We constantly update that angle when we're rendering this entire thing. Right. So we update the angle. So now, what we effectively have to do, we have to rotate this entire stuff around the um, you know y axis, around the y axis. Mm -mm. So and maybe that's precisely what we need to do. Um, we can do something like rotate. Uh, yep. And we can provide the angle. So let's implement a function that does the rotation 
uh, vector 3d rotate um, hmm, we can call it rotate y rotate y because we're rotating around the y axis so that's a three point and then the angle right so first thing we need to do we need to find the angle between uh, like we need to convert the cartesian coordinates to uh, polar coordinates right so the first thing we need to do we need to find the angle of that vector so when the vector is actually x and um, z so y stays the same we don't touch y so to find the angle we have to use a tan 2 right so as far as i know a tan 2 literally returns you like arc tangent uh, of the y divided by x which is effectively an angle uh, right so in our case we're going to consider z to be y so we're going to have a tan 2 uh, p x and p z so this is going to be the angle uh the actual uh, so it's called delta angle right so this is delta angle this is actual angle of this thing and then we need to find the magnitude so the length of this thing so this is going to be magnitude so we're going to consider the x x and z y so that means it's going to be cosine of p x right um wait no no no, it's, it's not like that. We have to. It's the opposite, right? So it's a, I, I confused the conversion. So I already tied, as you can see. So, uh, PZ, PZ is QRTF, right? Is QRTF, like so. And we can actually say, okay, so this is the delta angle, right? And we're converting this entire thing back by doing something like make vector 3. So cosine F of the angle multiplied by the magnitude, then uh the y we keep the y the same then sine f angle multiplied by magnitude there we go so this is basically how we're going to be doing all that um but this is not it actually because this thing is centered not at yeah this thing is not centered at zero so it would make sense if z uh was kind of zero uh, it is centered okay so imagine that this is z then we have one then we have two right so the object is centered in this uh in this specific region uh right this object is centered in this somewhere in here uh but we need to, the object to be centered in zero for this entire thing to work right so we can say that the center of the object is around one point half. So, which means that for this thing to work, we probably need to subtract one point half, rotate it as usual, then bring it back, uh, and then move it back to one point half, something like that, right? You know what I mean? So uh, let's see. It didn't work. It didn't even compile because then we have pi. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so there's another interesting thing. Oh shit! I mean, it's rotating. It is doing something. And it's also doing that extremely slow, but I mean, it's, it's doing something. That's it's kind of interesting. Um, all right. So what if I don't do that? one point half uh so let me double check which is kind of cool right so it's already rotating something um right remap uh -huh. <clears throat> so this is like plus one mm -hmm. zero one it's from one to two mm -hmm. yeah, okay so if we don't do this thing it's not gonna make any sense right it is not going to make any sense or will it make some sense by the way uh, let's not build anything but SDL right, let's only build SDL for now okay so it is rotating Uh, right, so 
it's so basically there is a problem when it goes behind the camera you know what i mean so we need to like think about how we cut um you know the 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 polygons that are like how is it called there is some surfaces like cutting surfaces like a far cutting uh, how is it called i don't remember there was a, like a fancy term for that but i don't remember because i'm not a, a 3d developer or something like cooling but there was like a term clipping yes clipping planes yeah, yeah, yeah. clipping planes that's what i was looking for I, I know that there is like fancy terms and stuff like that and you have to use the correct term to, for people to recognize that you're a real developer and if you don't you're not a real developer but i couldn't give a shit i'm sorry i'm here to write code not not to say words so um let's actually see so this is z uh, and I wonder why this particular thing doesn't really work. Maybe we can try to scale it. Um, yeah, it could be that when it starts rotating, maybe the handle uh, is actually uh, like touching the camera. So we may want to try to make this entire thing smaller. Okay, so let's first of all not rotate anything. Uh, let's actually try to do something like this. Uh, right, so we're not rotating anything. So this is the thing. Uh, the thing I want to do can i make this thing smaller all right uh in terms of x and in terms of like everything else um i can say that okay let's actually put it in half if you know what i mean uh all right so multiply by half so can we make it smaller simply simply smaller and yeah it turned it into something weird mm -hmm. and i suppose it didn't particularly work for these things um <clears throat> i suppose if we want this stuff we actually have to take the entire thing and multiply by 0 5 i think so both one and two so let's actually go ahead and do it like so uh, okay yes so you can see a handle look at that you can like see the handle somewhere far away so let's actually say that it's a scale 0, 05 and we can make it as small as we want so this is a scale let's say we're gonna make it like 25. all right uh, all right so this is a small uh, 25 it's not particularly that great maybe uh, 35. all right all right, that's pretty cool. Okay, good. Uh, cut 3D. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just enable this entire thing. And of course, it's not going to uh, rotate correctly again. So it's going to go like around the zero. And this is not what we want. And this is where it, it goes into shit. So this is not what we want. So again, let's try to do minus half. Uh, right, and when we are ready to uh, convert it back, we're going to do plus half, and hopefully that will do something uh, correct. It is. It does not rotate things correctly, unfortunately. That's kind of funny, though. But I mean, it's definitely not what I want. Um. Mm -hmm. What if we do minus one and then plus one? Maybe that's what's going on in here? It must be centered, but it's not. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Wait, maybe we have to actually do something like this then? For all of them as well? Is that a good idea? Maybe. That's kind of funny, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's, it's, it's kind of cool that... Uh, keep in mind, this is completely CPU. I mean, it's fucked up, but it's for a CPU thingy, it's kind of... It's kind of fast for a CPU thing. Uh, yeah, the deforming cut. Um... It's a boat. It's, a, it's, it's indeed a boat. Uh, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So what if we make it half? 
just realized something's definitely fucked up. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool with the lighting and stuff. Yeah. Mm. What's the reason it's super slow in the front but not in the back? Because of the size of the triangles? Because we render triangles pixel by pixel. Right. So that's why, I suppose. Um, okay, so let me try the other thing. I wonder if I can unfuck it up, right? <laughs> but again, I'm already kind of tired. Right, so... Yo, look at that. Look at that shit. This is not OpenGL. I mean, uh, yeah, this is not OpenGL. That's what makes it so freaking cool. It's not OpenGL. Huh. Mm. Nice IKEA cup, thank you. Uh, it's Kolumbetka who made it, so not me. Um. So, uh, we have some stuff, like... Um, the Z now goes from 0 to 1. All of these things go from 0 to 1. We um, shift them by 1 further, so now it goes from 1 to 2. Right, it goes from 1 to 2. So, theoretically, theoretically, if we do something like that, mm -hmm. maybe we should do that right before the rendering. So, essentially, what if we always store this kind of stuff from 0 to 1 and don't worry about this thing ever? Right, so this is always from 0 to 1. This is from minus 1 to 1, and this is from minus 1 to 1, so we never kind of worry about this thing, right? So it is stored like that, and when we are projecting, right, when we are projecting, where is the projection? Uh, project to, yeah, 3D to 2D. When we are projecting, we're effectively doing plus 1. Right, what if we just do plus one, additional plus one. Mm, but then the Z is not going to work, right? So the Z, Z buffer is not going to work, so it's gonna fuck up this thing. Right, so... It may not easily work. <sighs> Man, I'm, but maybe, maybe that's fine. So let's actually give it a try. So... I would suspect that the Z buffer is going to be fucked up, but maybe it's fine, who knows. Maybe it's going to be all right. 3D to 2D, right. So trolling 3915, thank you so much. I I'm sorry if I missed any any subscriptions. Sometimes I, I do that because I'm focusing on uh, coding too much, quite often. Um, so project screen and yeah, so I expect that the Z buffer is going to be fucked up. Yeah, the Z buffer is fucked up. The Z buffer is definitely fucked up. So, uh, now, once we projected all of that, we are also trying to interpolate that between the different Zs. And since we're interpolating between these different Zs, it makes sense to probably add plus one in here for each individual Z. Uh, do we use Zs anywhere else? Okay, okay. I suppose this is the uh, last thing. Well, I mean, it kind of worked to some extent. And now, since we have that... Right, so we know that all of that stuff is from 0 to 1. So that means we can quite easily just subtract this thing and then add this thing. All right. It's kind of funny. Mm, 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 mm. But yeah, so I'm. Um, I think I'm already tired. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> but we kind of make it to animate and I'm not sure if I uh, yeah um, so let's let's bring back the scale let's bring back the scale to the original thing scale uh -huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's going to be 1.5, 1.5. In here, we're not going to do plus one. We're going to just do the original thing. Uh, and in here, we're not going to do plus one. We're going to just do the original thing. Uh -huh. All right, so yeah, so this is going to be the result for today's stream. Uh, oh yeah, thank you so much. Yes, somebody. Yeah, that's that's the good good point. Yeah, as you can see, I'm I'm just getting super tired. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Scribble. You're right. That's the last thing I forgot. Almost. I mean, kind of worked. Kind of didn't. But at least it unfuck up the shape, right? Uh, unfuck up the shape. Right. And I wonder if we don't scale anything, is it going to do something? Uh -huh. Okay. Alright, so there's something wrong with the shape generally, but... I suppose this is because of the aspect ratio, but now we have a rotating thingy. So, interestingly, I have a feeling that now this should work. All right, so I should have originally put, put it in here. Uh, all right, this may work. Kind of, almost. It almost works. It almost works. Right, so again, I, I'm already tired, but we actually kind of close to this thing. So I'm pretty sure after I slept, uh, a little bit, I'll be able to fix that stuff. Um, so, but yeah, but overall, we actually achieved the the goal. Um, so, which is kind of cool, I think. I think it's pretty cool. I say, thank you so much for the gift. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone who subscribed and stuff. Uh, and here's the most important part. Let's try to compile the demos to Wasm. Will that thing work in Wasm as well? Right. So we can also check if it works in the terminal and in Wasm and stuff like that, you know, the usual things. Uh, okay, so it complains about A10 implicit stuff, but that's that's totally fine. Right, okay, so we have a version that renders everything in the terminal. Uh, right, so I'm going to go to Olivet and I'm going to try to run demo. Uh, what is it called? Oh my god, cup 3 d uh, terminal. All right, there we go. Uh, mm, God damn it. One more time, there we go. This is in terminal, by the way. <laughs> it's actually cool, isn't it? I think it's pretty cool. All right, so we can render this shit in terminal. Yo, that is so fucking pog. Can your OpenGL do that? Can your OpenGL do that? I don't freaking think so. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, and let's also check out the WebAssembly version, right? In the WebAssembly version, uh, we'll have to do something like, okay. So this is a triangle 3D. Let's quickly replace triangle uh, 3D tech with cup 3D, a boom. Right, and in here I'm also going to do something like this. Uh, boom. And let's also disable all of the other things, just in case. Uh, and let's start the uh, HTTP server 6969. Right. Uh, Localhost. And let's take a look, does it work? Uh, it doesn't work. Is it because it didn't compile? Okay, so we'll have to take a look at the at the console. I suspect 
that we don't have some of the things oh shit oh fuck oh damn no 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 i know what it's all about it's so bad now it's also gonna cache that version and i'm not gonna be able to properly refresh it because it's web oh my god it's so annoying okay so essentially what do we need in here so we already have a10 so the question is what we don't have i think we have everything um what function am i using maybe i just have to oh my god okay demo 3d so that's the things i'm using right so and that's the things i'm gonna put in here all right so let's give it a try a102 implicit oh i see i see a102 it has to be f so that explains it there we go mm -mm -mm. so cool is this it cache it oh yeah there we go so web assembly it's kind of strange that it has this kind of shape this is probably oh yeah i think i know why Yeah, I'll have to investigate like all of the problems with that. But overall, we managed to animate that. Um, so, which is kind of cool. Right. So, let's actually do something like this. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? I think that's pretty pug. How do you render in the terminal? Well, we can zoom in. And these are the characters. So, just put characters into the terminal. Yeah. That's how you do terminal graphics. It only works on RTX 14 bit. I want to learn this stuff. Where do I start? I have no idea. Where do I start? I learned how to do this thing literally on the stream. <laughs> it's actually really fucking funny. Like, everything I know, I learned on the stream by doing that. Like, before I started this project, I had no idea how to do this shit. I just started doing it and started exploring and... I, you know, stitched it out of the pieces from the internet. So every time somebody asks, like, where do you learn all of that? Like, how do you learn all of that? The answer is in front of your eyes. You didn't watch. Right. I learned it right in front of you. I just show you how you learn this kind of stuff. Like, right in front of you. I learned it right here, right now. You just missed it. Sorry. You literally missed it. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, so that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you on the next stream. I see you on the next stream. Uh, yeah, should we raid somebody? I don't know. Does it make any sense to raid anyone these days? Uh, I like I open Twitch, and I have zero motivation to raid anyone because it's so freaking slow. Like, imagine being able to render a rotating 3D object without OpenGL in a terminal relatively easily with a relatively good FPS, but not being able to open a website with an interface that doesn't really do anything particularly special in terms of, like, visual stuff that was not really possible 10 years ago. It's just like... What is going on? with computers. I don't really know. So I have zero motivation to write it. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't want to deal with this UI. Anyway, that's it for the day. Thanks everyone who's watching me. Really appreciate that. Have a good one. See you next time. Bye.